New England Candle Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candle Pin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By FICO's Family Bowl Drum in Franklin, Massachusetts. Visit FICO'sBowl.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching. From Fico's Boladrome in Franklin, Massachusetts, it's New England Candle Pins Summer Tournament 2014. In our second elimination show, Stoughton's Fred Spintig rolls against NECP veteran Skip Easterbrook. Scene game two, Franklin's own Dan Legge takes on Mike Kustak from Dudley. Now let's roll with your host, Jay Horrigan. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another season of New England Candle Pins. This is our summer season, and this is our second show uh, of our preliminary rounds, our Sweet 16 rounds. Today, we've got Skip Easterbrooks versus Fred Spintig. Uh, Fred is a future Hall of Famer, from what I understand, and he's also our number one qualifier. Fred, welcome to our show. Thank you very much. Where are you from, Fred? Stoughton, Mass. Stoughton? I love Stoughton. City of Stoughton, the Black Knights, Stoughton High Black School. Knights, you got it. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Fred, it's your first time on our show, but have you been on other uh, TV shows? Yes, I have. Awesome, awesome. Have you bowled at Fico's here before? Yes. Have you ever had to deal with Skip Easterbrooks? Yeah, uh, uh, a lot of times, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. He's a good guy. Hey, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. We've heard that. He'll tell you. That's absolutely right. Well, we all have our crosses to bear, and today yours is Skip. Okay. Okay. Skip, welcome back. It's good Thank to you see you. I've missed you. you. Missed you terribly. <laughs> I missed you too. Okay. Excellent. Uh, you come in as the 16th seed, but uh, you're on our show. You right. made it, so you've got a chance to win. Yeah, just made it, though. Barely, but, but that's all right. That's all right. You're still in, and. Uh, you, we will have a new champion this time because Dave Chester Cove has decided to allow someone else to win it. Sure. So uh, being on the show means you have a chance. Beautiful. Yep, I hope so. We'll see what happens. And you bowled against Fred before? Oh, yeah, he's very good. No doubt about it. Excellent, excellent. Well, we're looking forward to it. This should be a great match, and we'll be back with the start of it in just a moment. What is community without community support? Without community access? Without communication that creates a common bond? You can make community by making Community TV. Contact your public access Community TV Center. Learn how you can help, because you can. Volunteer today. When you support your Community TV, you also support your community. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jay Horrigan, and I'm joined today by Dave Chestico, our two-time defending champion, and Richie Myrick has joined us as well. So, guys, thank you very much for joining me. No problem. Right on. It's good to have you here. No. And okay. we're <laughs> going to be starting our first match today with Fred Spintig and Skip Easterbrooks. And up first is going to be Skip. Good luck, Skip. We're all counting on you. Skippy just off the head pin left, leaves the uh, four horsemen plus the seven pin. Piece of wood to help cover the seven. Oh, goodness. Opens with a fantastic shot right out of the gate. That's a good cover right there. I think he'd have taken it even without the wood there. I agree. Skip comes in as the number 16 seed. But as I said to him, guys, it doesn't matter what seed you are. As long as you make the show, you get a chance to win it all. That's right. 
keep you just off to the head pin to the right this time. Drop six. I believe that's two tapings in a row, uh, two sets of matches in a row that Skip has been the, the bubble boy, if you will. He's been the 16 seed. Yeah. And the way he throws the ball, it's I, I can't imagine a more dangerous 16 seed, to be honest with you. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. The little bit I know of them, Skip and Dangerous go together. We'll take 25 for the first two, which is a good two. Now, Fred Spintig, first time on our show, out of Stoughton, Mass. Fred also just off the in the first ball. Drops three. Fred had a terrific qualifying score, 4.05. His high singles a 188, his high triples a 470. And while he averages 112, those numbers uh, indicate that he could be a more capable of a bigger score than that. Starts with a nine box. All right, Fred looking to bounce back. Post up a mark of his own to match Skippy's. Right in the pocket. Ooh, he moved the three pin off its spot a couple inches there, but. Yes, he does, or did. Doing a uh, cluster to the right with a piece of wood. Two pieces of wood, actually. Tricky little shot. Ooh, he goes yeah. high on it. That's a good yeah, shot right there. That was no gimme. That, that, that piece of wood behind that first, the first piece was, was a little tricky. Indeed. Indeed, but he played it right. I think, I think he had to go high there. Try to drive everything straight back as best as he can. Off the head pin right, catch you the good break. Drop six. He's a one, two, four, five. Tough shot to carry the five pin, but uh, he drives it home here. And he does. And he does. Good shot. Easter Brooks is a longtime member of the Fenway Painters at the World Candlepin Invitational Tournament, which will be held in Haverhill, Mass. Or is it Bradford, Mass? It's right on the border, it's, isn't it? Well, technically it's Bradford, but everybody up there calls it Haverhill. <laughs> I got a feeling Bradford's. I don't know. Village. I'm not from around here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and Easter Brooks throws a strike on the spare and puts yes, the pressure on early. Yeah, Academy Lane's up in Bradford, and uh, they'll be hosting the Worlds and skips a Fenway Painters member. Yes, he is. A team that tends to make the playoffs more often than not. Fred uh, working on a spear, just missing the head pin. Drops five. Leaves the one, two, four, five. No, excuse me. Seven, nine, eight. Five. Who's, line? <laughs> who's counting? Yeah, I'm telling you who's counting these things anyway. He's got five. <laughs> Need my coffee. <laughs> still early. It is still early. All right, cleans it up for a good nine box. But he is opposite uh, some pretty big marks here. Port now at least put up one on a two. Oh, right right in the pocket. Ball. Oof. Gets, uh, gets no luck at all. Even a 5 7, no wood. Extremely tough shot. Takes a five. You always love a ten out of a shot like that. Absolutely. It'll settle for the nine, and now Skip has a, a real opportunity to put some pressure on. Skippy working on a strike. For, uh, for a good fill. Yeah. 
Right in the headband. Oh, and he's uh -oh. gonna get the double. <laughs> One at a time, and, <laughs> and his wife Tina in the background says sloppy double, and <laughs> you saw every <laughs> pin take out, every pin on that one. We could slow it down for you, but it was already slow motion. Now he's on the double. On the head pin again, triple! Wow, oh, the best ball hit. of the three, perhaps. He leaves the stone cold six pin. A 32 pin advantage through four. It's pretty impressive. Ooh, oh, sneaks just by, it. sneaks by. Just a whisker. Still a hell of a good half, 83. Easter Brooks is on fire. Fred Spentig is going to have to come up with a bunch of marks of his, of his own here. And there's the first one. Oh, a strike right there by Fred. Take, looking for a double of his own, he leaves the diamond shot, as I like to call it, the 3, 5, 6, and 10 pin. No wood. Or the check mark. Excuse me. Oh, he was oh. right on it, too. Just overcut the 3 pin in front of the 5. Have to settle for the 9 fill. Three pin advantage for Skip Easterbrooks. Not entirely out of the question, though. Still four four boxes to go. Skippy. Wow. Oh, we're gonna run out of boxes if Skip keeps throwing the ball like that. What a ball that was. I haven't had to add these many big numbers in a while. Hit the pocket the last four frames in a row. He's got three strikes to show for it. Coming into today, Skip's average was 20. And Skip just hit his average through seven frames. Yeah. Only good ball. Skip wants that wood to stay. Oh, no, it isn't gonna. Oh, boy. The 2 8 10. This is a toughie. Yeah. Dave, we have another one of those. Uh, Scoring. Oh, there we go. Now it's corrected itself. So Skip is at 129 through eight frames. Very good squeeze going for the highest score on the show. Is that right? What is the high score on the show? Do you know offhand? Uh, memory serves me right. The highest score that I am aware of is a 143. But I could be, uh, I could be mistaken. I think it's been around for a little longer than uh, that I have seen every Good show. Good ball right so. there. I think you're right. I think it's a 143. Spin take leaves the 5-8. Piece of wood, but he's not going to want to use that. He's going to want to go right at the pins here. Does go at the pins. He just sneaks by the five. Fred kind of ran into a buzz saw today, but he's still not out of it. He throws a couple, uh, throws a double of his own. He can climb back in, right in the pocket. And he leaves that check mark again. Ooh, just off to the right. Oh, why 
God, gets a 10. <laughs> Skippy looking to close out a string here. Right in the pocket again. Well, he leaves a tough one. He's got the three, four, six, but he does have a piece of wood actually touching that four pin, which makes the the shot really a lot easier than it normally would be. Indeed. Looking to cut it. Oh, just missed. Takes out just the six. At this point, Dave, when you're in this situation, if you're up big on an opponent, how do you how do you handle these last two boxes? I mean, really, you just want to stay smooth and steady. You know, I mean, there's obviously no no real big pressure on you anymore. But you don't want to get lazy because then you can really throw yourself off going into the next uh, next match. So it's ideal to stay uh, to stay smooth and uh, keep on your game. Uh, Skip throws a real smooth ball right there. One. That's for sure. Yet another strike for Easterbrooks. On a great ball right now. Yeah, he's spot on at the moment. That's 148 with two balls. On the fill. Looking for another double. Just off the head pin, but he's getting a break. I'll tell you what, he's going to be tough to beat if he keeps throwing that ball yeah, like that. Yeah, you ain't kidding. One seven, just for good measure. And there it goes. There is it. It out. 158 for Skip Easterbrooks. Very impressive score. 70% on the hit bin will give you those kind of scores. Yeah, he really found it after those first couple boxes. He, he reeled it in and. Right, looking for a hammer of his own. Leaves no luck at all for him, the 510. As you say, the score is not really reflecting how well uh, Fred has really bowled. I mean, oh, he, has, he has also been 70, uh, hit that been seven times already, and just hasn't gotten a real good lead to, to really shoot right. it. Right. No, that's that's absolutely right. He's he's been right on it. And again, and again on the head pin, and again a tough break. You know, he, yeah, exactly. and he's sure he's he's out of the match mathematically, but you know by his. His body language and his mannerisms, you couldn't you couldn't tell him that, you know. Yeah. That's that's a really good uh oh, you know, he cherries out the two pin for, for good measure, I guess. I, yeah. That's just a nice little uh a little a little throwback right there. That's that's nice to see. Indeed. Give your all on every ball and you'll succeed in this game. That's the name of the game. And Fred Spintig takes his medicine for a hundred and seven game. Wasn't an indication of how well yeah, he threw I is. Totally you guys alluded to him. 158 to 107, I think, is yep. the, the other thing with, with the 107. Um, a lot of times in this show, a 107 will put you right there. Yeah, sometimes you know, it does. It, yeah, within, I mean, you within, look at, uh, within 10 pins of winning. Yeah, you look at the the last uh, round of 16 here, uh, the two scores that won that were 116. Right. So, I mean, that, that could have put, you, put right you right there. But, there. but with uh, Skip shooting what is easily been our shows since we started this show a, a year ago, oh, a, a, high, a high a high score that the show has seen, uh, the 158. Uh, there's nothing that would have beaten Skip Easterbrooks today. So uh, Skip Easterbrooks with the 158 uh, is our winner, and we'll be back to talk to our bowlers in just a moment.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back with our bowlers, uh, Skip and Fred. Fred, uh, I, what can you say? There's nothing. I ran into a bus saw. <laughs> That's about the best you could say. You know, you bowled a 107. You didn't bowl poorly. You bowled well. Uh, I was dropping the ball. I had some severe opportunities, which I didn't take advantage of. Skip was throwing a great ball. Uh, Skip did bowl a great, uh, a great game. I know uh, during uh, the actual game, uh, Dave was saying uh, one of the stats you were on the head pin uh, seven out of ten times, which is great. Your 107 in a lot of our matches would put you right there, you know, within ten pins of being able to pull the match out. But when you go up against someone that has what one, two, three, four strikes, two spares, and yeah. bowls are are. Our entire show, since we've had it, that's the highest score that's ever been bowled in, in our show. It, it's tough to beat. It is. It was. Well, you, but uh, you did a great job. A, a great effort. Skip. Um, I, don't know. I got lucky. <laughs> good, good effort, I guess. Thanks. I, I got lucky. I actually hit the head a couple of times. You did. You did all right. Uh, I don't know why you didn't bowl the 159, but I guess the 158's okay. But not bad. Uh, I can a couple more of those and I'll be happy. <laughs> Abs absolutely, absolutely. Well, you move on now to our Elite Eight show, uh, where you take on the winner of the next match coming up, and with a chance to move on to our championship show. Very good. So you've been through this before. Yep. Uh, so it's all it's it's nothing new to you. So I you'll still, but. <laughs> <laughs> but you were tremendous. You, Thank you. you just Thank you. everything seemed to be just going right for you. Yeah, like I said, I got lucky. A couple of strikes, they didn't look like strikes to me, and then it all mixed in very, very nice. So. Well, you had that one where we heard your wife in the background. The pins just went ding, ding, yeah. ding, ding. A little lazy, but I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, you got to take it. Absolutely, absolutely. Got to keep the pressure on Fred, like I said before. The guy's very good, very good bowler. Yeah, well, when, well done by both of you guys. Thank well you. done. So we'll be back with our next match in just a moment. Welcome back. And we're with our bowlers for our second match of today's show. Uh, we're with Mike Kustek. Mike uh, from Dudley, Mass., our first time on our show. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, Mike Kustak. Thank you. Kustak. Thank you. I just asked you, and I still Thank I you. still messed it up. Yeah, that's all right, though. Well, you'll learn. You'll, if you, if you'll you, be you, learning today. If you're yeah. on our show more than once, you'll learn I mess up names. All right. Fair enough, fair enough. You're lucky I got Mike right. <laughs> that's <laughs> so this is our fir your first time on our show. Have you it been is. on other shows before? Yeah, I've been on the other shows that they've taped and stuff like that before. So, yeah, this is a great time, though. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Awesome. And you come in as our uh, eighth seed. Uh, you qualified eight, so that's that's good. That's not bad. Not bad. I didn't think I threw my best, but we'll see what we can do today. Excellent. Excellent. And you're up against Dan. I'll mess it up because I messed up his name. Leggy. No, that's good. Ah, the Leggy, well, yep. I got it. Yeah, you I, did. I got it. And Dan, you've been on our show before, correct? Yes, yes, I have been. You were on, I think, the first series we uh, did. I believe, I believe it was the second one. Second one, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Well, then welcome back. Thank you. Have you ever bowled against Mike before? No, I haven't. This is the first time meeting him. Okay. And you're our ninth seed. Pretty close, nine and eight. So there we go. There we go. So, um, have you been bowling well recently? Uh, yeah, I have been. Yep. Good. Good, good. Okay. Well, we'll be back uh, for this big match between Dan and Mike. I got those names right. Those are easy. I'm going to stick with those two names. So we'll be back uh, for this match in just a moment. Welcome back, and we're ready for our second match of the show, and it's going to be Dan and Mike, last name's non-pronounceable, and Dan is going to start off as our number nine seed. Go ahead, Dan. Leggy. I was going to, I was you going nailed to chime it. in You nailed that, it, Jay. Uh-oh. 
Somebody's got it on the hunt. Just in time. Just in time. Whew. Yes. Dan, just missing the headpin, gets a great break. Uh, leaves the one four seven piece of wood touching the four pin. Used to be touching the four yeah, pin, it now it's be. moving around. Just by. Touches the wood though, but it doesn't take anything. It's a nine. And that's a good nine there. When you leave the when you leave the one four seven or the one six ten on the third box, that's a, a, a veteran move to just you know, kind of take your medicine and take the two pins, or yeah. try for the two pins anyway. It's hard to make that three. It is. Stuffed head pin again. Looking like he's gonna take out the head pin anyway. I don't know that he wanted the head pin yeah, to fall okay. there. If, if it rolled out of the way, I think he would've liked it, but. Wasting no time, goes right at it. Oh, look at whoa, that, whoa, and he gets whoa. the shot. <laughs> Very nice. See a cap, done. play a cap. What a start there. Yes, indeed. So Leggy takes advantage of the mark, and here comes Mike Kustak. Old friend of ours, Dave. Bowled indeed. a lot of times with him. Oh, yes. I actually had the, had the pleasure of bowling the Worlds a couple times with uh, with Mike. and. Likewise. He's a, he's a real heck of a teammate, and he's, he's just a good good dude. He's a good dude. Yes, indeed. I think that's a good way to size it up. And he's on the two pinner to and start. He makes it. You might Mikey. notice that Mikey, uh, Mikey bowls off what you would say is the wrong foot. You can notice it yes, as he, yes he as he follows through just on the practice slide. Even right there, he he he's a right-handed bowler, but he slides on the right foot, which is really unusual. Um, right. We're actually going to see uh, a couple of a uh, couple of weeks from now. Uh, Jason Doucette's the same style bowler. And these two yes. guys right here, that, that you'll see Jason, uh, as, as I mentioned, a couple weeks from now, but um, Mikey is, uh, and, and Jason are the best off the wrong foot, if you will. I mean, he throws that ball nice and smooth, and that's Mikey, the 1-4-7 seven, all day long for Mike Kustak. That's Mikey, his shot. Mikey and Dan don't like to waste any time. Nope. You know, they, they see the shot, they go get it. Nope. And you, you want to talk a, a high intensity. Mike Kustak is high intensity. Oh, yeah. and, and so is Dan. And I, I've only bowled with Dan a couple of times just recently in the roll-offs and stuff here. But he's got a he's got a real fire to him as well. Yes, he does. He, he loves the game. He loves the competition. And, uh, and he hates to lose, so. Got to like it. Indeed. Takes seven out on the fill and then just misses it. And he puts the ball in the same spot for an eight box. Qualifying scores were one pin apart, 357 to 356. Yeah, you say that, Jay. I was just looking at that, Jay, myself. Yeah, see, I checked that out ahead of time. Yeah. Almost yeah, look like I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Dan almost converts that uh, that shot. Almost a 10 out of that. All right, Mikey working on a spare here. I mentioned uh, Mike Kustak is a, a perennial world's bowler. He bowls at the World Kansas Championships most every year. Um, and this year he'll be bowling with uh, another bowler that we'll be seeing, uh, I believe, on our next episode, Dave Hodge. And uh, yet another, I think Steve Reno will be here as well. <laughs> it's yeah, going to so, be, a, uh, it's gonna be almost their entire team. team will be making this uh, uh, set of shows here. So some quality bowling. Mike's got some work to do here to finish this box up. Get to eat. Mike Kustak bowls out of Mohegan in uh, Webster, which is widely regarded as a tough house. And uh, he's averaging 120 according to his uh, card here. And I believe it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's a good bowler. Yeah, I gotta hand it to the uh, to the new owners for, or management of Mohegan. They really uh, they really fixed up the place. Really under nice. Management, I was unaware of that. Yeah, I'm not uh, I'm not sure, but uh, you know they definitely put pumped in a lot of good money in there and uh, re really really uh, made the place nice. Well, that's good to hear. 
Pustak will settle for an eight. He leaves the two open boxes there, and that'll leave Dan Leggy uh, an opportunity just down to three pins through four completed. Yeah, right in the pocket. Looking for the spear. Oh, Cherry. Cherry's the five pin. Tough break there. Back on the head pin again, another good ball. He leaves the triangle to the left, the two, four, five. A few pieces of wood there, but he's not gonna look to use them. He'll look to go right by them. Yeah. Ooh, he just was a little it. too far by them. Cleans it up for the 10. I suppose the wood might have taken yeah, might have it there, taken Dave, it right. but yeah. I guess we'll never know. Getting <clears throat> a little frustrated, I think, there. Yeah, the second ball is just missing, uh, yeah. really just missing. I mean, Cherry picked the first one, just got by this one. Mikey all over the head pin again, drops nine. Stack leaving the six pin. Looking for the spear. Ooh, just by. Wow, he didn't miss that by much. No, he did not. Throws it for the 10, though. It is interesting to watch him go off his right foot. Yes, it is. And it, it's noticeable because he, he, you know, he uses so much body push after the shot. Mikey had a first ball off to the right. He leaves uh, leaves a big cluster of seven. The first time I saw him bowling like that, I, <laughs> I, I wonder how you don't just hurt yourself. Smoke your ankle every time you <laughs> yeah. throw the ball. I mean, your thigh, your knee, your hip. <laughs> like a muscle. <laughs> and you see it happen. I mean, I see it happen with, with conventional bowlers like you or myself, Dave. You know, yeah. like, I'll throw the ball off my ankle once a year. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> For no reason whatsoever. It just, it's amazing. And it's amazing how accurate he is doing so. And same with Doucette, like we'll see later on. Oh, tough eight. Ooh. Tough eight, Dave. And both bowlers leaving a little, uh, little room here. Dan Leggy is only uh, has uh, scored 63 through six, and Mike Kustak has 66 through six. So it's only a three-pin difference. Just off to the left there, knocked down four pins. Gets the back door action to take it. Cleans it up for a good ten. ten. Every pin here at this point, you know, it's three a three pin match and tens might actually do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Anytime it's a single string match, pinning is so important. Let's see if we can find the head pin here. Wow. He doesn't, but wow, what a break that is. That's the one yeah. two nine with a couple pieces of good wood. All he has to do here really is hit the head pin. Uh, and there he goes. Wow. <laughs> he almost wow. made a liar out of me, but yeah. it worked out anyhow. And that's a big one for Dan Leggy. Yes, it is. Got some uh, housekeeping to do here. Go ahead, Dan. Just roll on. That's a, that's the toughest shot in bowling, isn't it? Clearing the dead wood's got to be the toughest shot in bowling. See what happens. Or you can just do that. Oh, yeah, he's on that one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> well, let's we know Dan up. can't roll a gun of ball. <laughs> not on command. A raucous <laughs> round of applause for the <laughs> for the clearance of the wood. And now here's Mike Kustak. Just off the head pin. He leaves the four horsemen left with the six in the ten pin. Looking for the spear. Yeah. Oh, he hits oh. it. Wow, what a ball. And he didn't carry wow. either corner pin. You don't see that very often. You should carry one of them. Wow. And 
that's a good nine. Now, uh, two, two frames. A couple of tough leaves from like. Like you're looking to find the head from here. He's opposite the uh, square from Dan Leggy. He drops, drops all over seven, that head pin, still falling. Nine. He's got nine with a nice piece of wood out in front, I think. The wood's angled just slightly to the right, Dave. I'm not sure yeah. that it's exactly the best piece. And he's going to take a look at it, Mike, here. Yeah, I, I still think you got to hit it, though. It's just, it's just where, where on the wood do you want to hit it? Yeah, you just hope it doesn't ricochet right around off the sidewall. Right. Pick your spot and go for it. And, and he, he does. right on it. And that's a great shot. There's really no gimme whatsoever. And, and that's a good cover from Kustak. And a two-pin match. Could prove to be a big spare now. Yeah. Dan Leggy looking to take advantage of the, yeah. of the shot the that he pocket. just made. All over the pocket. And wow, did those go quick. Honestly, say I blinked and suddenly they were not there anymore. Yeah, that went so fast the machine didn't even pick it up. Looking for the double. Drops nine. Got some wood out there. Drops nine just as quickly. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I play the wood. Well, we capped it <laughs> wow. and he got it. Well, there's more than one way to make a single, I suppose. And that's that's gonna force Kustak to mark twice. Yeah. He drops ten in it. Yeah, big fill here. He's really gonna put the right with, that, on, with any yeah. sizable fill, yes. Right in the pocket and again for the fill. that's a sizable fill. That he loves well the 17 done. with that. Great finish from Dan Leggy. Great Dan Leggy with a 130. Spare strike, spare in the eighth night. That's, that that's a Dale. great finish. And now, Mike Kustak. It's gonna have to. It's gonna have to mark out. Just off the headpin, but he gets a big break in terms of pinfall. It Drops really is a, a, a four there buries him. He would have been forced to double strike in the tenth box. Now, if he makes this, he just needs another nine fill or a ten fill. Mm -hmm. Tough shot though. Looking for the spear. Oh. Wow, he hit it again. Wow. That's that's twice he didn't carry the uh, the back pins on a good one-two hit. Yeah. Unfortunately, missing that 8-pin there gives him 99 through 9, and uh, the math doesn't work out for him nope, in this sense. Work out. He needed at least one pin on the last box. <laughs> well, he drops 8 for good measure. Makes the spear. So Dan Leggy is going to advance after a flurry of a finish. Indeed. Looking for a big fill. And he drops five. The 114. Mike ends up with the Dan's 130. It's a tale of two halves of the match there. Yeah. Mike had the first half and then Dan came fighting back. Yes, he did. So, Dan Leggy will end up winning that match over Mike Kustak. 130 to 114, and we'll be back to talk to our bowlers in just a moment. And we're back with our bowlers from our second match from today's show. Uh, first of all, Mike. Great job, 114 on most days. That would get you a win yeah, uh, just today. I missed that single, and uh, I knew it was just still there in the match. I was throwing a pretty good first ball when I missed that single. I, I felt like I left him in the match, and I knew he's a good bowler, so it was just a matter of time before he got his marks. It, it, it seemed like it was, uh, we were saying, almost like two different matches. The first half, you, you seemed to be in complete control, and then the second half, Dan came flying back with uh, his eighth, ninth, and tenth frames were were really, really yeah. good. Yeah, that's why you got ten frames. You know, it's never over till it's over. So I mean, I knew he was going to have a couple of marks at the end. I gave it all I could at the end, and just wasn't enough. Absolutely, it was a great effort, great effort. But as you said, Dan did a great job yep. coming back. He did. He really did. 
Well, damn well done. Thank you're you you're gonna go on. You're gonna uh, bowl against uh, Skip Easterbrooks uh, in our one of our uh, Elite Eight shows. Yep. Um, get to take him on. The winner of that will move on to our Final Four show. But you did a great job. Like I said, the uh, eight, ninth, and ten with the uh, spare strike spare. Yeah. That was the difference. Yeah, I finally woke up, found the head pin, and once I got that strike, I knew I was finally back on it, and I just finished up good. And, and I was able to finish off. And it seemed like a couple of frames before that, you were just frustrated because you were just missing. Yeah, I was just off, and I just, yeah, it happens. But I found the head pin, so. Excellent. Well, it was well done by both of you. So, guys, great match. Uh, that'll do it for this show. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Uh, and we'll be back again next week with another Sweet 16 show with four more bowlers with a chance to advance to our Elite Eight. Thanks again for everybody for watching, and we'll see you next week. Pins is made possible through the generous support of the U.S. Candlepin Bowling Association. Learn more at uscandlepin.com. By FICO's Family Bowler Drama in Franklin, Massachusetts. Visit ficosbowl.com. By your community's public access channel. And by your Franklin friends and neighbors. Good folks just like you. Thanks for supporting Franklin TV. And thanks for watching.